How's it going, tour lifers? A little bit different episode today than normal, uh, and this is maybe a segment that we want to see happen more often. Uh, through the interwebs, we met a really fun set of sisters who had just bought themselves their first RV. Uh, it was a Class C, it was the little Dodge-faced front end, which is the van that I'm always telling people to get. So right off the bat, even though they told us they were in over their head, they definitely got the right one to begin with, which is really awesome. So in today's episode, we head over to April's house to dig through her uh, rally jamboree of 1978. I hope you guys enjoy this episode and if you have an RV yourself that you're a little bit over your head, uh, please reach out to us, email us, uh, shoot us a comment and if you live close, maybe we'll even stop by to help you out. Um, so I've been obsessed with van life and tiny houses for a really long time. Um, and Annie, my sisters, um, had to listen to me and I've been showing her lots of photos and stuff and she's like, that's great. And um, more recently, you know, I've been following the house sprinter vans or a whole thing. Uh, and then I somehow was like, what about like an old RV? And then randomly found this girl um, on Craigslist. She was in El Monte. Um, so one Sunday we just like drove out to El Monte to see it and then we just fell in love. Her name is Loretta. Yes. <laughs> There's a song by Towns Van Zant called Loretta that we both really like, yeah. and so it just seemed fitting. She's a 1978 uh, Jamboree Rally, so it kind of makes sense to be a throwback. Looking uh, a little rough now. Yeah. So she was, she looked better when we got her. Um, somebody had painted the ceiling black, and then we found out the reason they did that is because the ceiling was super water damaged. So the first thing we did was we um, recovered the roof, which was good, but you know, we've had really bad rains this year. And so just this week we realized like, this is all wet, you know, around these exposed wires. So that's awesome and exciting. We found you guys on YouTube because there's not a lot of people out there doing like vintage RV re renovations. Um, but yeah, it was kind of made us realize, like, I wish we had found them earlier. So, because this is a really crazy impulse buy from Craigslist, and we don't know anything about how cars work, and I mean, like, nothing, um, we looked at it, we really liked it, but then we thought, let's get somebody to look at it and make sure that it's, so it's good. Like, all we had was the word of the guy who was selling it that it ran. So we found this Craigslist mechanic, and he comes out and he seemed really great. Like, he seemed like a really nice guy, super knowledgeable, and he was like, you know, I'll help you with everything. And this was all over, like, Christmas break, and we were both gone, and he kind of had her in his care during that time. And basically, we found all this stuff out because he, like, ended up being kind of crazy and flaky and butt-dialed me while screaming at somebody, which was really scary. Um, and then we got a new mechanic, and he said all of the stuff he had charged us for, like, he essentially put, like, gum on the uh, fuel filter. <laughs> like, he charged us for, our or, I'm sorry, the fuel pump. Charges for like, he like plugs experiment up. or yeah I know I, <laughs> some Wrigley's something yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah okay what's that do it's your voltmeter so that's what's telling you if you're charging or discharging okay so but it's good that it's charging it's just something is confusing it okay. again box of parts alternator's thirty five bucks uh, voltage regulator which could easily be doing that to a screw voltage regulator all all available tomorrow. Somebody took what's called the thermostat out of the Okay. Because it should have been it should have been hotter. It should be up. It should be like up in that that little range they're telling you, you know? Okay. But it was like 125, you know? So it's it's stink too cool, actually. Um, which is not a terrible thing, it just is what it is. It's meant to idle or it's meant to run at a certain operating temperature, that's what makes the most power. So you wanna have it there if you can. Okay. Um, but anyway, so when you get into part throttle and you're like cruising and that blade opens up a little bit, it exposes a little one of those vacuum ports in that carburetor. And what that does is it tells your distributor, which is another part, that's what it sends the spark to the spark plugs. Okay. Uh, there's a timing that that's happening, you know, so it's happening at a very specific time. Okay. Right? And you can adjust when it's happening, like either, you know, back or forward at a certain moment. So a little earlier or a little later, right? Okay. Kind of with most of these old cars, the earlier you go, the more power you're gonna make, because it's gonna make more uh, sun pressure, it's called basically. Mm -hmm. And as this thing spins, this little wheel with these teeth on it, mm -hmm. it's called a reluctor wheel. 
there's a little magnet on this side with, a, again, like another piece of metal. And they pass each other, but they don't touch, but there's a very little gap in between. And every time they pass, it creates an arc. And so, basically, there's a little electrical, like on this ground, that goes from this guy, which is connected to your coil, which is like a huge power reserve. Mm -hmm. And then every time it passes one of these little teeth, this thing sends power. Right, so as it spins, it's just going back, 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 back to all of the different cylinders in a very specific, what's called firing order. So this is your carburetor. Okay. This is your choke. And so basically when it's cold outside, the air is really, really dense. And so there's like, basically imagine it like, if there's a ratio of air to fuel, when air is denser, there's more of it. Okay. So in the morning, you have always have the same amount of fuel adjustment. Right? And then, but in the morning, it's really cold, so the air is really dense. So there's way more air than fuel. So you're gonna be really lean, it's cold in the morning. But if you literally cut some of that air with what's called your choke, then it balances back out again. Gotcha. Right? We're gonna cut a bunch of air, and now it's gonna be way more fuel than air, but that air is really dense, so then it ends up even. Mm -hmm. And then as it warms up and that, that air density changes, this thing should open up to full open. And then now it's at the adjustment it should be at. And so does it naturally do that based on the density of the air? Or do based on, do based on temperature. So okay. in here, in this little guy down here, there's a little like thermostatic piece of metal, mm -hmm. right? And, and it's it's warmer now. I mean, I imagine the engine is warmer now. Yeah, I mean, it's, I guess I could let it warm up a little more. But it's, it's trying to open. There's not much resistance anymore. So it, I bet you if I start this and this little choke pull off gets vacuum. Mm -hmm. This is important. So basically those blades are like right here, you know? And so these ports are actually underneath those blades. So they're getting that full force of vacuum. Mm -hmm. But because they're directed somewhere and capped off, none of that vacuum is escaping from the motor mm -hmm. until we want it to, right? So this, for instance, has a little diaphragm inside it. And as soon as you start the car, it gets hit by that vacuum. And this goes oh. So remember I was saying that if I move this forward or backward, or you know, like left or right, it'll change the adjustment. Mm -hmm. I want it to stay tight, tight enough that it's like trying not to wobble out or something like that, but then I can make an adjustment. Okay. So, and then, it was kind of, you know, kind of sweetly, I can see where the old adjustment was because of that little, mm -hmm. so it's been sitting there, it's not dirty. So I know where I should be if I, if I don't want to muck with it, you know, it's right there, that's where, basically also number one is kind of pointing right at this little, Little dude or so, I'll just kind of remember that. Hey, they just did good. Yay! Good job. Yeah, it's just probably small stuff. I should let it run now that I can see it, and then I should grab a screwdriver and get the adjustment done. And I wish this wasn't so floppy. Oh, here's our chance to check our transmission fluid. So this is your transmission dipstick. Oh. That's really great. That's good? Yeah. Good. And that's like pink, great, fantastic blue. Nice. Also, so smell that. It smells very neutral. Yeah. You know? Yeah, not If it was bad, bad you would be like, oh. And was that bad? It's around. good. It's that's good. Yeah. Fantastic. Like, that's here. really great <laughs> color and transmission blue. Oh, where did this come from? <laughs> this is your transmission dipstick here. Oh, okay. So it seems good. Super great <laughs> colored blue. Like, okay. Really, there's no like, no gross smell, like you should smell this. It smells very neutral. Yeah. Okay. Um, just so you know. Yeah, so I mean, wait, it doesn't smell like anything, exactly, really. super neutral. Almost so if you, you know, as you own this thing, just always pay attention to that. I mean, mm -hmm. okay. transmission fluid's the kind of thing that, realistically, you don't have to change if you're okay. if you're treating your transmission well. Okay. Like, it, it just stays forever. Yeah. It's okay. just, it's like mostly detergents and other stuff. So, okay. Uh, if it doesn't overheat and get, fucked up, the fluid doesn't get like, you know, shitty, then it, yeah, it just stays forever. So okay. stay on that, just check it every once in a while, you know what it looks like now. Yeah. And, like it was a stamp of approval, it's in fantastic shape, so. Okay, and we'll know, like it'll smell bad if it's oh, bad. God. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I love when these things run real good. Great, snap and throttle. Good. Yeah, you're gonna be like, holy shit, you drive the same funny dress, right? <laughs>
valve's not bad. Mm-hmm. That valve's bad. Uh, but also... Oh, jeez. Car- wow. Awful. This oh is my, my nightmare. Oh my god. Wow. Is that what? the smell you were talking about? Yeah. <laughs> It's a natural additive. Oh my god. Okay, so. <laughs> so that means it, it's in there. Oh, but what's great is it takes yeah. really oh my god. easy to get out. Yeah. It's, this yeah. is like, it's tiny and there's four bolts. Okay. So uh, <laughs> this valve's bad, so okay. this tank needs to just come out. Okay. Uh, because there's a special tool uh, they have to use to undo this. Okay. And it just won't, they, they won't be able to get it in there. Oh, but those four, um, just pop those out, and then this this guy comes off from there, and then the whole tank just like goes uh, it's tiny. It's like this big. Okay. Huh. Yeah. So it's really small. It's not gonna weigh anything. It's gonna be super easy to get the car and then drop it off. Two hours later, come back. This will be new, and this whole system will be new. The the gasket behind this will be new. Oh, wow. Like everything will be done. And then before you put it in, you can sand the container all pretty. Yay! Yeah. The other leaks are probably coming from where, like they screwed this thing into the in the top, you know? Yeah. Um, and water is amazing at getting into things, you know? So all these little like holes in the mesh, it's just getting underneath like, right away. So Water damage is only bad if it stays wet over and over again for a long time, okay. you know? It's not, it doesn't happen in color. It, it would smell, you would, you would know. Yeah. yeah, mold and mildew smell. Right, I'm coming down. We kind of went through every system on their RV from the starting charging system uh, to timing to carburetor adjustments to kind of going through the house and the water damage. Um, they had an RV that was really, really great and actually didn't have that much water damage. Like if you walked in, you'd maybe be scared if you weren't used to that type of look. But basically, it was just a little paneling on the ceiling. Just over time, it gotten stained and gotten a little weak. So they had knocked it all out already. And I'm so proud of them for not being afraid of, of what could be under there. But at the end of the day, all of the beams and even under the AC from factory, there was a quarter inch steel uh, to support the air conditioner. So they got a great RV and that paneling costs like seven bucks. So they're gonna be able to knock that out quick. Um, I even crawled underneath the RV to check out the suspension and what the transmission looked like. And you know, even though when I got there, the RV was not running fantastic, they got such a good RV. End of day, I think by the time they've ordered all the parts they need to order and have them all installed, they'll be at about five grand, which for a rolling home is fantastic. So uh, remember, if you dig the episode, subscribe, hit the like button, hit the bell button so you know when the newest stuff's coming up. Uh, Till then, tour lifers, I love you, and go out there and fucking tour it up get out in the world and explore. And uh, if you get the chance, save something from the wrecking yard.